What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here. It is Columbus Day, and uh, all of us here at Ferris Wheelhouse are celebrating. Um, all of us here at the uh, the Looney Tunes critic set and the Looney Tunes critic uh, portion of Ferris Wheelhouse, which is this corner of the basement. I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say there. Um, hang on, let me take another sippy sip. In fact, you know what? While I'm taking a sip, why don't you guys uh, watch the... Uh, <laughs> no birthdays today yeah that's the new intro so um riding the shield i apologize uh for being gone so long i apologize this is a uh, for this because this is an experiment this particular episode i at the time of recording this on columbus day i don't know if anything else is going to come of this if this is going to be i'm trying to do this uh from the uh the the, the laptop here and um using um using software obs uh broadcast software but this is this is an old laptop it's not the one i've had for the longest time but it is an old laptop it's you know it's limited as to what it can do and i just uh i don't have the money at the moment to uh the funds as it were to uh to to make any bigger purchases but uh so if it's um if there's a lot of lag and the, uh, the the picture quality isn't what it could be. I do apologize, but um, that, that's what we're dealing with. Um, so uh, some new uh, weekly and daily segments are returning. You know, obviously this daily segment of uh, Riding the Shield is returning. We are uh, doing a weekly segment that uh, you presumably have already seen or will see, depending on the scheduling of this. Uh, Ask Manx Anything. AMA, Ask Manx Anything, and it's... it's uh, up on the ship, uh, my uh, my crew, uh, Manx and, and uh, Twink are, uh, you know, we we put out the uh, the email address and people are sending Manx all uh, all their questions and uh, so that's that's going to be every Monday and uh, we'll be doing a Columbus Day thing on that too. Um, Columbus Day for Looney Tunes though was uh, pretty interesting um, because we've got uh, well first of all here we go let's just talk about that cartoon. Um, it it's only been restored once that I know of, but uh, they've apparently struck a new transfer, a new HD transfer uh, on HBO Max. If you look at that, um, uh, and it's, it hasn't. I don't. To the best of my knowledge, there's no uh, a physical uh, media release of uh, the newer Blu-ray, but. It looks really great. It looks better on the HBO Max platform, as you guys can see, I'm sure. Speaking of physical media, um, oh, the other Columbus Day thing I was going to get into, um, I'm not really going to get into it, but Bugs Bunny All-American Hero. Have you seen it? If you haven't, understandable. It sucks out loud. Um, as is the case with a lot of the, uh, the later Looney Tunes TV specials, um, they're not very good. The only thing good about them, in most cases, is are, are, are the uh, the cartoons that are you know used in them from the old days. Um, but um, you know, All American Hero, it's pretty crummy. Um, speaking of uh, crappy TV specials uh, that were done late, I can tell you one that is not crappy and was done so late it was the last one. And that is, of course, Bugs Bunny's Lunar Tunes. And I'm trying to get it done for Halloween, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but I'm doing a review of it. I interviewed uh, uh, layout artist Kevin Brownie and, of course, my good buddy Greg Ford, who directed it um, and co-wrote it with Ronnie Sheeb. Actually, he didn't direct it. Uh, Nancy Beeman directed it. He produced it and co-wrote it. Anyway, working on that, too. But uh, the... In addition to Riding the Shield coming back, I don't know if Riding the Shield's coming back. I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know if, if I'm comfortable with doing it this way. I can't edit them anymore the way I used to. That was the problem. That's why I cut cut the, the project short is because if all we were doing here on the on the channel were Riding the Shield episodes every every day uh, during the week, um, the weekdays, I that would be fine because it took me all day to do them. Um, and this whole thing over here, this new iteration, is more of a streamlined approach that I'm using uh, broadcast software with. And so, again, this may not last either. So I'm just telling you now. But uh, this weekend, I was uh, I was real busy um, doing some other stuff, getting uh, AMA, Ask Manx Anything, ready. 
Um, I, through no fault of my own, uh, had to uh, had to go to Walmart, much like anyone whoever goes to Walmart. Uh, it was through no fault of their own. Um, and I passed the uh, the DVD section, and I found these two babies. And um, we have the 50 cartoon collection, Looney Tunes uh, collection. Uh, and it's in the uh, Warner Brothers Iconic Moments Best of Warner Brothers series. Um, I don't know what that is actually, a th if that's a thing or not. But uh, holy crap, is that a red cover, right? I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a little date here at the top of these. 21 June. I think you can see that. I hope you can see that. Yeah, 21 June, right at the top. And this one says March 2021 at the top. And that is as close as I can get in terms of... Uh, oh, and there's a Looney Tunes 80th sticker on there. So this thing is as... This one is, a, is at least as old as last year. And I'm of the opinion, just based on looking at these things, that uh, I'm going to do an unboxing video for both of these, but and I'm going to look at them briefly, kind of review them. But um, I don't have a lot of hope um, that they're that they're good. I just, you know, Warner Brothers invites you to celebrate the most iconic moments in animation history for the billionth time. These are all double dipped shit. Uh, something else is weird here too. I have no idea who, what that picture is of Daffy. Can someone please? tell me what this is from because it, to me it looks like either promo art from some other weird source can you see that yeah with him and the the gun or it's from duck dodgers my guess is it's from duck dodgers because of the weird thick outline and but uh maybe it's uh, one of these uh, special because there's as you saw there there's three bonus looney tunes cartoons there's also coyote falls which is a really great theatrical cartoon, a CGI theatrical cartoon. But something tells me, well, let me just start off by unboxing this one first, but something tells me that these are not going to be all that great in terms of, that's, that's a cool design. 50 cartoon collection Looney Tunes, which is not a sentence. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's open this up. There we go. Cellophane, it's a pain. Um, it's always Wabbit season now that the best of Looney Tunes characters, cartoons from the Warner Brothers vault are available in the this wild two disc collection reunite with bugs. Elmer Porky, this is a big, 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 Looney Tunes gang and an independent of Tickle the Funny Box. Who writes this shit? All right. Um, three bonus Looney Tunes cartoons. Okay, so it's two discs. That's what they look like. Um, and so that's what the special features are. It's uh, the Looney Tunes. There's three Looney Tunes cartoons and that Coyote Falls thing. Um, so I am going to... Put that on the stack. I'm gonna I'm gonna review these. Uh, put this on the stack, and then let me open up this other one. Bugs Bunny Golden Carrot Collection. This one uh, to me feels like it's probably an even bigger jip. But I kind of understand why they would resort to something like this for the uh, the Walmart crowd because the fact is there's not you know if you want to put out the big shit. You gotta make, you gotta prove that there's a market for it. All right, so we've got disc one, baseball bugs, rabbit seasoning with uh, Michael Barrier's commentary. So you can put that on if you need to go to sleep. Uh, Long-haired hair, uh, Michael Barrier. Uh, high diving hair by my good buddy uh, commentary uh, Greg Ford. Bully for bugs. There's commentaries on a lot of these. Uh, What's up, Doc? Rabbit skin. Water, water, every hair. Big house bunny. Big top bunny. Uh, my bunny lies over the sea. Wabbit Twubble. I wonder what. I wonder if that's the uh, the restored one. Uh, or no, not Wabbit Twubble. I'm sorry. Ballot Box Bunny. Rabbit of Seville. Special features. Uh, greeting from Chuck Jones. 1975 documentary. Camera Three Boys from Termite Terrace. Behind the features. Bugs a rabbit for all seasons. 
Short Fuse, Shoot Out the Small Tales of Yosemite Sam, Forever Befuddled, Bonus Cartoon, Blooper Bunny, probably not restored, because uh, that cartoon is restored on HBO Max now and it looks gorgeous. Um, um, and then a uh, half anime, uh, uh, oh, um, there's the commentary from Greg, Bugs Bunny at the Movies, which we've seen before, yeah, the Bugs Bunny Show Vaults, Stars Board, Astronauts, uh, with Mel Blanc recording sessions, Trailer Gallery, which I don't think anyone ever watches, um, Sills Gallery, Disc 2, The Big Snooze, Broomstick Bunny, um, with commentary from June Ferre. I don't know if that's on an existing disc. Um, it doesn't sound like it is. Uh, Bugs Bunny Rides Again, Bunny Hugged, French Rare Bit. Wow. Girl of My Dreams, The Hairbrained Hypnotist, Hair Conditioned, The Heckling Hair, Little Riding Ra Red Riding Rabbit, Tortoise Beats Hair. By the way, I hope I remember to kill myself. Um, hair Conditioned, Heckling Hair, Little Red Riding Rabbit, Tortoise Beats Hair, Tortoise Beats Hair, Rabbit Transit, Slick Hair, Baby Buggy Bunny, Hide and Hair. Some of these have music only tracks too. Um, pretty sure that this is like a double dipping triple dipping of stuff from the Golden Collection. But of course, I don't know that, do I? Because I haven't ripped these yet, or looked at them. Um, I'm not going to use this laptop here, so we are going to pause for station identification while I go and uh, take, uh, take the appropriate time with these, and uh, we will be back in just a little bit. All right, it's much later. You can tell because the lighting's different. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to get into the uh, to what the menus look like. It doesn't matter anymore. Um, I do like this cover art. This is pretty cool. Um, this is good stuff to have if you're a completist. Um, but it, you know, you. I think it is really cool that you can. They're finally putting, you know some of the shorts, um, the, uh, the theatrical shorts and the Looney Tunes cartoons on uh, physical media. Now, I don't, if I, you know, I don't necessarily need this, but I do, uh, you know, I'm the Looney Tunes critic. I feel like I should have it. So, um, do I recommend this? If you're a completist, yes. Um, but there's a lot of stuff on here we've seen before. And also it's standard def. It's not Blu-ray. If this was, if, this was a, if either of these were Blu-rays, I would absolutely recommend it. Um, because with the Blu-rays, you're not just getting upscaled um, stuff. You're, you're getting, you know, they're redoing it. They're, they're, what do you call it? They're doing new transfers of the, they might be the same restorations, but they're going into those new restoration, newish restoration negatives and they're doing new HD transfers. So they do look better. Um, the sharpness is a lot better. Now, this Bugs Bunny, golden carrot collection uh when i initially opened this thing up uh and before i tra transferred all this stuff i realized it's it's a five disc collection collection not the two that are on this side um and i so i kind of changed my whole attitude once i actually opened this thing up and and uh looked at what it is because i can definitely recommend it on the grounds that if you don't have the golden collections or if you've kind of worn them out a little bit um the the golden carrot collection in terms of it being what it is which is a double dip sort of thing you know for for the walmart crowd because indeed i did buy this at walmart but i mean you've got 15 cartoons on every single disc and that's five five discs um and every one of them has special features so it's kind of a best of from you know all the cartoons are Bugs Bunny um, and it's a kind of a best of in terms of the uh, the the best Bugs Bunny stuff from the the golden collections um, so I, I can't really shit on this um, um, aside from the usual you know stuff with having the, the Looney Tunes characters rendered in you know with with weird shading um, the, the cover for this one, the red one, yeah, this piece of... The worst part about it is that, like, 
that shading that weird shading on bugs it's a it's a great drawing presumably uh pez helped me out presumably by mike fontanelli and um looks like mike um but the thing about that cell shading is that it, it you know it's the they're not they're not natural positions for the for the shadows to fall on bugs especially right there you can probably maybe you can't see look at the the cheek there there's a there's a shadow on the uh, in the middle of the cheek and then just below it it doesn't make any goddamn sense and it's also it's also kind of misleading you know to the eye because if you're looking at it you can you can mistake it for another whisker because the whiskers are right on top i mean it's just so it's it's amateur and it really does weaken the original drawing um especially since there's no reason to give it you know that realistic roger rabbit shading because he's not in a realistic setting he's in a cartoon setting it's just stupid but all that aside you know that's another reason i love the porky 101 uh set i mean it's one of the only times they ever ever got the the artwork to look good on the covers um because even when even when you have good art like this i mean this is really great presumably fontanelli stock art um you know the shit this shadow is just just fuck it all up anyway um so that's it for uh, this episode of uh, riding the shield except to say that uh it's a uh, Columbus Day. Happy Columbus Day to everybody. Um, and also, if uh, if Columbus Day isn't your thing, then celebrate the fact that uh, they recently uh, announced the um, season two for the Animaniacs reboot on Hulu. So maybe I can finally talk about it. Um, I'm really excited about it. If I'm really excited about it because if you see it, it's a it's a Thundercats parody. And there's there's probably you know a bunch of '80s kids that are nostalgic. I'm an '80s kid who's nostalgic for the fact that I fucking hated the Thundercats even when I was a kid. And so them making fun of it is not like a tongue-in-cheek thing. Me, I love it. I love it when Animaniacs flexes its superiority over other TV animated fair of the day. I speak more of uh the, there was a, a great fat albert parody that they did that tom minton wrote that i just uh it's a savage it's it's a savage buggering of of uh of all things filmation uh but anyway that's uh that's gonna do it hopefully i will be back tomorrow with another riding the shield and uh we will be doing more of this hopefully 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 i don't know how this is gonna work out timing wise but um hey man it could happen it can happen here. Uh, oh, you know what? Yeah, I don't know why I'm uh, getting long-winded with this. I have the credits right here. So, yes, uh, edited by Twinkle Belly, and uh, I never read that before. Yeah, Twinkle Belly's name has been in the credits this whole time. Weird. 